Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. It's Thursday, February 4th, 2021. I hope you're doing great. Hello, hello, and good morning. Uh, my name is Jennifer Cotton, and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Midlothian, Texas. So that means I teach people how to make cards, gift packaging, scrapbook pages, and all kinds of other stuff, home decor pieces, and more with stamping, card, uh, card making, pa ink, paper, and lots of cool tools. Hey everybody, good morning Stella and Robin and Jewel. As you come on, say hi. I've been doing this 19 years, by the way, being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. This is my full-time job. So if you are new, which I hope um, someone new will see this video today, welcome. And if you've never stamped before, check you know stay till the stamping portion and check it out it is so much fun very therapeutic anybody can do this i'm not crafty you don't have to be crafty because our company does all the artwork for you um, you just have to be able to copy basically hey mary ann good morning <laughs> let's see who else jen good morning i've been talking to several of you guys saying good morning in the last day or two Sandy, hello. Hey, Dana, good morning. And Susan, and thank you for sharing, Sandy. So as you guys come on, say hi, comment, you know, hi, good morning, whatever you want to say. Um, and that will get you entered into a drawing to win the cards I'm going to make today. I'm going to make three with the art gallery bundle. Ooh, ah, I love this bundle in the hall in the mini catalog, the January to June mini catalog. You can get that stuff until June. Is it June? Let me read. Yes, I can't read the date, but it's June. It's the tiniest writing ever. Anyway, these products you can get till June, although towards the end, some of those accessories become while supplies last, so get them early. But I'm going to make three cards with those products as well as a bunch of other stuff. And you can have a chance to win those cards. Also, if you share the video, you'll get entered again, but you need to comment that you shared like Pat just did. Thank you, Pat. And I already forgot who said it earlier. Um, but everyone who said shared, they're commenting that because Facebook doesn't tell me who shared, basically. So, then you'll get entered twice, basically, to get a second chance to win. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Shirley. Good to see you. Good morning, Lynn. I'm sure you're working hard over there. Thanks for sharing, Susan, and good morning. Awesome. So, as you hop on, say hi, and feel free to share the video. This is my full-time job, so that helps my business when you share and comment, because then Facebook is like, oh, people like this video. Let me show it to more people. <laughs> and, um, of course, you can click the little like buttons as well. All right, so... By the way, if you don't have these catalogs and you don't have a current demonstrator, contact me and I'll let you know how you can get them. This is one of our three current catalogs. Really, there's four technically because we have a beginner brochure as well. Hey, Marty. Good morning. Thanks for sharing, Shirley. And good morning. Marty's in Florida. Nice. Okay, so don't forget, or if you don't know, every single month I have an online ordering special. That means if you go to my store and just place an order outside of a class or event, um, I will give you a free gift. And the gift is a class packet to make four cards. And this month, those four cards will use the Hydrangea Haven Bundle. So you'll definitely need your stamps because you stamp those at home with your own stamps and ink. So you'll need these, but I do recommend the dies also because if we stamp... We cut everything we can for you, but if you if you need to die cut it out after you stamp, you'll want to do that yourself or hand cut it. So if your order online is 25 or more, you get the free class packet. And if it's 50 or more, you also get a free full accessory, like a roll of ribbon or a package of some embellishment. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh, there is a code associated with this special. It's called a host code. And you enter that when you're shopping on the checkout page, like the little shopping where it shows your total. There's a word, host code, and a plus sign. Click the plus sign and then you add that code. So that'll be posted in this video description later. You'll see it when I point the camera down. And 
you can just ask me for it. It's, you can sign up for my email newsletter and get it that way. You can see it on my blog. So I do that every single month, but every month it's a different stamp set that we focus on. Okay, reminders of what's coming up. I do this, like I said, full time. So I have lots of events that you can choose from all over the United States. Again, you stamp at home in most cases. Um, so you provide the ink and stamps and I provide all the paper. It's all cut, die cut, punched, ready for you to just stamp and assemble. Let me grab, I should have grabbed this before I started because I'm gonna have to walk around this table and grab it. But I wanna show you one of my current class packets. Luckily they're not, I haven't shipped them out yet. Tomorrow's my deadline, but I think I'll get them. Well, I'm not going to say that. They might go out today, but they have to go out by tomorrow. This is one of my current class packets for a bigger event that includes $50 in merchandise. So I want to show you how we package them up real quick. They're labeled. This is new, but they're labeled with what class it is and whatever other info you might need about that class. And then this person actually bought two class packets within one. There was a bonus add-on. This is what you see, not the roll. Well, yeah, this is kind of a typical one, like the monthly online order special. You have all your card bases, and then you can't see it probably, but there's a clear envelope right there with a card. Or all the supplies for that first card are in there. And so each card is in its own envelope and then you have your card base behind it, and so on. So they're packed very, it's not confusing when you get the packet. And then you'll get a PDF tutorial, of course, with all of my events. And then this one, this is like part two of the class she's taking. This is my online celebration, which is Saturday, uh, February 13th, Saturday the 13th. Very excited about that. Um, anyway, you can see, same thing with the class packet. The projects they're gonna make are here. This one is 10 projects. The stuff they're getting with their fee is in here. They're, you know, so it's all packaged up nice and neat for you, ready for you to just follow the instructions and assemble. Now this class is gonna have videos to go with it. We're gonna do a Zoom and that's optional for them to attend, but different classes offer different things. They all at least have a PDF tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions, including measurements. Okay, so the I do four classes every single month. Hey, Pat, good morning. Hey, Diana, thanks for sharing, Dana and Jewel and Stacy. <laughs> and good morning, everybody. Hey, Joni, good to see you as well. And Pat, I can't remember if I said Pat, and Charlotte, good morning. Okay, so four classes every single month without fail. The rest are add-on classes that I offer. So they move around. Um, all four of these classes have, if you're a local customer, you can check out the supplies and take them home and stamp with my stamps and ink. If you're local, you can also attend in person, very limited space and there's rules you have to follow, but you can attend in person. And then you can take it to go and stamp at home with your own supplies. So three options for these four classes. Um, each one uses only one to two stamp sets, so you don't have to buy like 500 stamps to be able to complete it. Each one includes the written tutorial. You can add on the stamp sets and bundles we're using when you register if you choose, totally optional. You can buy the PDF tutorials only for all four, but don't do that if you're in my team because you get those free in our Facebook group. Um, and you can add shipping, of course, when you register. So what are these four? We have card class and scrapbook class. They are both $15 or free with a $20 order. And you do have to register for all four of these, by the way. <laughs> yes, Marty, right? When we can just be like before and like, if I wanna do a live class, I'll do a live class. And I don't, I can cram 20 people in this room, but not now, <laughs> very dangerous. So I agree, Marty says, I'll be so happy when this COVID is over. Anyway, uh, both of these, all four of these classes, you have to register for them and then you can register separately if you're gonna take the tub home or attend live. But, and then after you register, you'll get the info about placing your $20 minimum order. 
So, card class, we're going to use In Bloom, which I've been playing with this because we're using it also in my bingo card class. And so I'm going to show you a sneak peek of those, but I haven't made card class samples yet. But this is so cute. Now that I've played with it, these dies, I love them. I don't know how well you can tell on the screen there, but all those flowers have stitching. So they can just stand alone. You can die cut a bunch of flowers and leaves and a bow and die cut this label and stamp a greeting on it. And you have a cute card. <laughs> so I love them. They are called Pierced Blooms. They're bundled with In Bloom in our mini catalog. Um, and then, of course, there's are the stamps as well and lots of cute greetings. So that's card class. Four cards, 15. S scrapbook class is three 12 by 12 pages for 2015, free with a $20 order. And we're using Springtime Joy on page 22, along with, let me get to page 22. <laughs> um, this cute little spring and Easter set here. And then we're also using on page where's my spot? 26 Garden Wishes. So basically, I'll use Garden Wishes for our spring two-page layout. So that's the set you'll want to have for sure this month, this one. And then Springtime Joy will use for the single page that will match the one next month. So any questions, just let me know. And the deadline for those classes, register by February 18th. My info's on the previous page. Register by February 15th. The kits are ready by February 20th. And if you took it to go, <laughs> thank you, Rhonda, um, they'll be mailed by February 22nd. So that one has a longer registration time. Now these two, the next two are you have to register by January 11th and you can either join the club so that you can get club benefits or you can just register for the class. All the information, by the way, with the links are in my customer emails. You can also go to my blog and click events, but then I'll need to email you the links because of Stampin' Up! policy. Um, but you can join a club where you just, it's the same price and you get these, either of these classes every single month. Some people have or in both clubs, or you can register. So, these are priced differently. They both include $20 in merchandise. Hey, Liz. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> $20 in merchandise. Register by January 11th. And, and then let me tell you about each individual one. So, we have sampler, class, or club. You're going to make a, a home decor piece. It's going to be gorgeous. This month, it's with the sand and sea, which we're using in my... Sorry, it's all lights on there. This is the one from last month. We're using sand and sea everything in my online celebration. So all those supplies are in a box right now, ready for me to, to do videos with next weekend. But it's on page 41. And it's not, I mean, yes, it's going to have shells on it, but it's not like a sea. I don't know. You don't have to live by the ocean to do this. Although I know at least one of my customers does live by the ocean and She's going to love it. <laughs> so, that's the stuff we'll be using to make our sampler with this month. That class is $28. Again, you get over $20 in merchandise. So, it's practically free, basically. <laughs> we cut all the pieces for you that we possibly can. And we order them from square one, is your first piece of paper in the packet, to the last square nine is the last piece of paper in your packet, so it's in order. So, PDF instructions, all that. It's, you know, I think it's pretty awesome. And then the other one is Stamp a Stack Club or Class, 20, uh, sorry, not 20, um, 12 cards, $20 in merchandise, $30. Again, practically free. Um, I actually am gonna show you some of the cards we're gonna make today in the sample, uh, stamp stack class. And it's gonna be with art gallery bundle. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> okay, so again, if you do need registration links or questions or anything, just you can send those to me 
by email or Facebook message, or you can post them here. Lori says sampler is awesome. Thank you, Lori. One of my club members. Um, okay, so there's that. Next, I have a bring a friend incentive. This is for January and February. If you have a friend who you want to get into stamping or is into stamping, and you, and I've never, they've never paid for a class with me or placed an order with me, then they will qualify as a bring a friend to any of my, not any, to select events that I have listed here. <laughs> um, so bring a friend and you each will get $5 to spend on um, anything you want in the future. Teresa can't get internet to work. Hopefully it will work on replay for you, Teresa. Darn. <laughs> and by the way, good morning, Cindy and Lori and Teresa and Liz. I see Pam watching. Make sure y'all say hi and hey, Rhonda. Um, make sure y'all say hi as you come on to be entered to win the cards today. Okay, so classes that qualify for the Bring a Friend is Stampa Stack, Sampler, Bingo, and Online Celebration. So, any questions, just let me know. Stamping Bingo Online. This is a card class where we're gonna play games of bingo to for our door prizes instead of just doing drawings for door prizes. And this event is Thursday, February 25th, 6.30 Central Time. Hey, Susan. Hey, Shannon. Hey, Evelyn. Lots of names just came through at the same time. Hey, Janet. She's like, I'm here too. Hi, Janet. And uh, yeah, I got Susan. Okay, so bingo. We're going to make four cards with the awesome In Bloom bundle. So again, we'll die cut whatever we can for you and you'll stamp with your own stamps. At home, this is all online, so it's only to go. February 25th is the event. Sign up deadline is February 13th, so you got a little time there. Um, there'll be lots of prizes you can win. Um, it'll be on Zoom. I'm reading my notes. <laughs> You're going to get a bingo card product to use to make your four projects. They're going to be so cute, including you're going to get some six by six sheets of the celebration designer paper there. Um, four projects using the Emblem bundle. It's just a lot of fun. So Stacy says it's so fun. Thank you, Stacy. Um, so these are the four projects we're making for stamping bingo and they're really cute, but of course I'm not going to show you every single one, but there's that stitching on those dies. So cute. So, let me know if you need that link or just sign up for my newsletter, which there'll be a link for that in this video as well. Thanks for sharing, Sherry. Good to see you. Okay, and I just added, it was in my newsletter that went out yesterday, which by the way, if you get my email newsletter, that once a month email is very long. And when you get to the end on whatever device, whether it's your computer or your phone or whatever, um, it will say click here to read entire email. You need to click that because there's more. So um, I just, I mean, I've always known that, but I like, it was a, a customer asked me some questions the other day and I was like, oh, you probably didn't see this part. Click read entire email. Um, so I don't know if y'all got down to this part, but I'm having just an online celebration farewell party. This is free to attend. It will be in a private, not well, in a, I guess a private Facebook group because you have to join the group. Um, I will be inviting, you know, the ones that I know who like to watch this kind of stuff. I'll be sending the little Facebook invite to you to join the group, but you can also request to join the group. Hey, Pam, good morning. Marianne said she just ordered that set. I think you mean in bloom. Yeah, it's so cute. I went through a lot to get my set because of my own mistakes, but I finally have my own set here. I actually made those samples with Lando's stamp set, but anyway. Um, online celebration. The group is called Jennifer's, with an apostrophe S, Jennifer's Celebration Farewell Party. So you can search that group in Facebook, and then you can ask to join it. Um, it's a free event. It's going to happen on Saturday, February 27th. 
at 10 a.m. Central Time, but of course it will be recorded. So you can still join the group and watch later if you know you can't be there live. There'll be stamping demonstrations. Thank you, Susan. Um, and of course, special offers as well and prizes. So uh, any questions, just let me know. My don't forget during celebration, which is Stampin' Up's biggest sale of the year, which currently is ends February 28th. So it started in January, it ends February 28th during that time period. So January, February, you can earn a free event from me just by supporting my business basically. So the event will be Saturday, March 13th on Zoom. If you can't attend, you're still going to get the, the supplies, you know, a, to make four projects plus a gift. And then if you can attend, there'll be games with chance to win pr prizes. You can earn it three ways. One, if you just place orders with me of 150 or more online or like if you're here at a class or you text me an order, all that counts. If you host an online party with me, which I would love to host an online party for you, we can do it on Zoom or Facebook, and there's lots of options. We can do it where your friends all pay a fee and they get stuff mailed to them, and so they'll have what they need to stamp at home. Or we can do it where um, they just watch a demonstration. So lots of options there. But if your party, if your friends and you order 150 or more, you're going to qualify to get my event for free, plus you'll be a host, so you'll get host benefits from Stampin' Up, which means free stuff. And then the third one option is if you take five qualifying classes from me during celebration total, so that was January and February, lots of you took lots of classes from me in January, so keep adding up, keep track, and let me know when you've reached five of these. Stamp a stack. And club members do count. Yes, if you are in the Stampa Stack Club, that counts. Sampler, same thing. Valentine Bingo, Bingo, February 25th. Online Celebration and the Paper Party, Paper Share Party. Okay, so let me know. Um, uh, who? Liz asked a question. It's not Blossoms in Bloom. It's called In Bloom, the bundle. And it is on page, I'm going to have to find it, but um, in the mini catalog, if this is helpful, I think it's past that we, there actually are a lot of flowers in this um, catalog that are similar, but they're different enough that you want all of them, like literally. Anyway, in bloom bundle is on page 45. And then the dies are called pierced blooms. And honestly, the dies can stand alone with or without the stamp set in general because they're, they all have all the detail in them. Like, I do not think there is one that you couldn't stand alone. You know how some dies, if you don't stamp first, they look just look like a blob? These all are an image. It's flowers, leaves, stems, and a bow, and a big label. So, anyway. Um... Where are we? Oh, so now we're down to Stampin' Up! Specials. So, of course, y'all know about Celebration, but if in case you do not, during or until February 28th, when you spend $50 or $100, you will get a free gift from this book, No Limit. You spend $100, you can pick two 50s or one 100 level. You spend $150, you can mix and match. You know, there's no limitation to what you can how many gifts you can get and any combination that is equal to the correct amount. So the, um, that's the main special of celebration. Well, I mean, it's not really, but it is. <laughs> um, so we have that special going on and then we also have, well, I'll talk about the other celebration specials in a second. Um, this is not, well, it is a special, but the Hey Chick and the Chick, um, Stacy, I did see your question. I'm going to get to that in a second. Hey, Birthday Chick, so products are available now to customers. So, everybody can purchase the dies that match Hey, Birthday Chick, which is a stamp set in our mini catalog but the dies are not. And then everybody can purchase the Hey Chick stamp set and the Chick dies. 
these are sold individually. It does not say that on the flyer. I have mine here somewhere. Um, it doesn't say that on the flyer, but they all, uh, they are sold individually. So, Hey Chick stamp set is $17. Chick dies are $32. And then the birthday chick dies are $27. And I've had that question is why I'm asking. Um, so, here's a sample that I completely copied from... Uh, a group that demonstrators can be on him on Facebook. It's called Demonstrator Planning Place. And, but isn't that cute? And I used the wire. I forget the name of it now, but that wire background stamp on there as well. So let me show you these dies again real quick. Hey Chick is the stamp set from 2017 Celebration. So if you have it, you don't need to buy it again. If you don't have it, you can buy it now. And then the, but now we have these matching dies and they're amazing. There's a fence. Actually, the fence is in the other one. There's a corn stalk with corn and the little uh, green stuff that you rip off the corn. There's a chicken coop. There's a like a yard sign so you can sell your eggs or whatever. <laughs> there's egg dies. Um, there's a tree stump. There's chicken wire. Like, it's amazing. That's 19 dies in the hay chick or... They're called Chick Dies. And then, of course, Hey Birthday Chick stamp set coordinates exactly, or coordinates perfectly with that other stamp set. And that's in our mini catalog. But these dies that coordinate with Hey Chick, Hey Birthday Chick, are not. So these are available now. It's 11 dies. It's called Birthday Chick. There's one for every single chick image. There's like a, a swag for birthday stuff. There is a fence. Um, a little baby chick, a bow tie, a sack of feed, and a happy birthday die. So, these are awesome. You can get them now. Um, okay, so Stacy asked for me to describe the Pierced Blooms dies. So, um, Stacy, these are... It's hard to describe them other than to say there are many, many shapes and sizes of flowers. I am not educated on what type of flowers flowers are. Um, but there's five petal ones and four petal ones. There are single leaves of a couple of different sizes and there are like a stem with five leaves on them. There are little images that can either be tiny little flowers or the center of the larger flowers. There are two different size circle images that can be the center of any of your flowers. There is a label image that's probably two and a half to three inches. Yep, two and a half by one and a half to put your greetings on. And then there's a bow. It die cuts the shape of a bow and it's like a double bow, so two loops and two strings, four total. Um, there's also some other uh, stem with just two leaves on it. So, and a lot of these, there's double. So there might be two of a leaf or two of a flower or two of a center. So hopefully that helps, Stacy. Um, but you know you can contact me privately about that as well. Okay. Um, so you know about the chick stuff, you know about celebration. But, and if you watched my uh, video about our starter kit, you saw me talking about this new butterfly stuff, but now I have the product in hand. Um, so there is some new stuff coming out for you guys next month in March, but demonstrators can order it now. It's called Butterfly Bouquet. So let me show you the real products. Get ready to be excited if you like butterflies. <laughs> um, this is a stamp. Look how awesome it is. It's called Butterfly Brilliance. There are six butterflies in one red rubber image. You can see there are little parts of the rubber you'll poke out so there aren't so many solid pieces of rubber in between, but it's one stamp with all those butterflies. Okay. <laughs> Susan, can't wait. Butterflies are my favorite. And that cracks me up, Susan, because I think they're awesome. Like, they're not, I don't, I'm not obsessed with butterflies, but I love them. But, um, 
a, someone texted me yesterday that butterflies freak her out. <laughs> and I was like, you know, you're not alone. Same with my daughter. She is so terrified of butterflies. So it just cracks me up because some people are scared of butterflies. But anyway, back to the stamp. Um, six butterflies on there. So you can make a background, do a scrapbook page. That would be awesome. Yes, Sally. So as a matter of fact, Sally says, is there a die? There are 12 dies that coordinate. And one of them, out of the 12, because there's a ton, one of them, I'm going to peel it off the sheet. Y'all know how it is when you haven't removed it yet. It's all stuck to it. It's very stuck. I'm going to pop it off here. This is a die, a single die that's all connected that cuts out every single butterfly I just showed you. So, let me see which way it aligns. Um, so, you can stamp the image and then die cut out every single butterfly at one time. Now, you could stamp it five times. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five. You could stamp it six times in six different colors, die cut all six out, make a bunch of projects. Um, or you could use markers and sponges and things to ink up individual ones so you can get different colors. Pretty awesome. Then there are all these dies that are the details of every single butterfly that can go on top of it, behind it, and add even more. They're extremely detailed dies. And I bet these are types of butterflies. I don't know my types of animals either, <laughs> or insects, or bugs, or whatever. Um, but I'm sure these are different types of butterflies because they have different shaped wings and stuff. So there's that. Then there's all these dies. And I have my order um, just came and I threw all the stuff over here where I do my live. So I haven't die cut or anything. But there's like a brick looking thing. So I'm not sure if that cuts. It feels like it does cut out bricks. Um, or it could just make an impression. There's like a hash marky looking one that I'm pretty sure is just for impressions like uh, embossing. Um, there's a few other butterfly shapes here, some smaller ones and stuff. And then there's another one that it looks like it cuts holes into your paper, but little bitty holes like, um, a splatter stamp, but holes instead. Yes, Susan, I believe they're bricks. And I don't know if anyone wants to comment. And I know, oh, no, she doesn't have hers yet. Uh, actually, y'all know what? I'll just cut it when I do my stamping later because I'm going to use the machine anyway. So we'll see what it is, Susan. I mean, I, I think it's going to cut it out, but we'll see. Okay. Anyway, I've gone on and on about something you can't even order yet. <laughs> but you can order it next month. But if you get our starter kit, you can get it today today. Stella ordered hers. Yes. And the reason I got mine so fast is I paid extra. Plus I was ordering stuff for my team meeting anyway. So, and which I had to emboss. So I emboss. <laughs> I was reading your comment, Sally, which I had to expedite. So anyway, that's why I got it so fast. You can always pay to expedite your orders. Um, okay. So Sally says, does it go with the embossing folder? The brick one? No, these are smaller bricks. So we'll see when I run it through the machine, but they're much smaller. I, I can tell that by looking. And it's a really little piece of a die, so I don't think it goes with it. Okay, so those products are also going to be coming out in our May catalog. So that's a sneak peek from the May catalog. Again, if you get our starter kit, you can get it today in the starter kit if you want. 99 bucks, get 125 of anything you want, including that stuff. Oh, and you'll get 200 sheets of paper for free if you do it by February 28th. So, just contact me for questions. Now, the next two products in the pre-order are not going to be sold again. So, these are going to be while supplies last once they come out in March. They will be available March 2nd until May 3rd or while supplies last. Um, so, there's this 6x6 six six designer paper and it's called Butterfly Bijou. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And what I really like about it, besides that it's gorgeous, is each design, there are eight sheets. So you can get a lot more out of that with six by six. And there are two, three, there's six designs. Uh, eight sheets of each, 48 sheets. 
let me try to just fan this out a little bit and show you the designs. Now, the first one that you see here, guess what? It matches exactly. Oh, yeah, that big die. <laughs> so, you can just um, die cut out all those butterflies, all six of them, right? So, as a demonstrator, we get to order early. Uh, we do have limits, of course, two of each of these. Well, there's ways around it, but anyway, there are limits. But um, two of each of these and the other paper I'm going to show you and one of each bundle and one of each stamp set and dies. Yes, Susan, another pack of paper, definitely. And once the or customer order starts, we can order as many as we want. It's just during the pre-order that we're limited. Um, so let me try to show y'all. I'll just take them out. So real quick. It's just gorgeous paper, but this is not carrying over. So get it now. And you will be able to get it in March. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but who wouldn't want to get their stuff early and at a cheaper discount? Because we all get a discount when we're demonstrators. Okay, so there's that. And then this paper is super cool. <laughs> it is called Natural Touch Specialty Paper. Again, it won't be in our next catalog. It's not carrying over. You get two sheets. It's 12 by 12. And it looks like birch. And it feels almost like a shelf liner. That's what, to me. Um, but it's not thick. It's extremely thin. It's much thinner than designer paper. Um, the other side has, you know, in my opinion, not as cute of a pattern. But I really like this side that looks like birch. So, all those products... You want to get them now contact me you can get that starter kit if you're not a demonstrator already if you are you can order them today <laughs> um and you should you know i'm sure you know how to do that okay so you can get the starter kit for 99 plus tax free shipping pick 125 including that stuff if you wanted that stuff and anything else you want and then as soon as you get the kit you can get a discount um, if you did see my video the other day where I was sharing about what it's like to be a demonstrator and some of the perks, the one thing I forgot to really hit on is, <laughs> love that um, Flutterbys paper, <laughs> love Flutterbys, she says, Chris, um, is the friendships I've made over the years. That truly is the best part of being a demonstrator. Um, when it started, it's just all my customer friends and then team member friends, which over 19 years, it's hundreds of people, which is amazing. And then throughout attending Stampin' Up! conventions and then earning incentives and stuff, meeting other demonstrators from all over the world. So, it's pretty cool. Um, and I've gotten to travel. Now I realize, as I forgot who was commenting about COVID earlier, but... Um, you know, like we didn't even get to go on our incentive trip last year with Stampin' Up! And none of us can really travel now. Stampin' Up! events, which they still host, are online. But, um, uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> oh, before all that with Stampin' Up! I became like a professional world traveler. And I'm not even talking about the incentive trips. Just going to conventions, Salt Lake City, Vegas, New York. Um, even traveling down to San Antonio, Houston. I live in Texas, by the way. I don't remember if I said that at the beginning. Um, I became a really good traveler. Like, so that's another benefit that I attribute to being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Stella says, totally agree. The friendship is priceless. And it seriously is. Um, so if you'd like to get more info about getting that starter kit, just let me know. And there's no obligation if you do that. Okay, almost ready for the stamping portion. The, uh, oh, paper pumpkin, don't forget, if you would like to get the kit for February, yes, you have until February 10th to purchase it or, or get the subscription. It's going to be called Bouquet of Hope. It's going to come in a box like this. It's going to have a stamp set, adhesive, accessories, and whatever projects, I mean, supplies you need to make nine cards, I believe. I'm going to 
Yes. Um, and they're all about, um, I'm going to get my notes back. <laughs> I'm forgetting the exact wording, but hope, obviously. But, um, let me go back to the correct page. I thought I had it all memorized. Oh, condolences, challenges, um, support. So it's that type of stamp set. That's weird, Linda. You might try closing Facebook completely, exit out, close the app or the web page, and go back in because I. No one else is saying they can't see. So hopefully, that's just something weird on your end. Which, I've seen so many glitches with Facebook and other technology things lately that it doesn't surprise me. Um, so anyway, it's nine full-size cards. I'll just show y'all the one from last month real quick so you can see what you get in here. You get ink. I forgot to say that. You get an exclusive stamp set that can't be purchased anywhere else. And then you get the instructions and all the supplies and adhesive to make whatever the projects are. Um, so you can either subscribe to it with the link that I'll give you. And it's $22 a month plus tax only when you subscribe. You can cancel anytime. Or you can just go to my website, click Paper Pumpkin, and you'll see your purchasing options. And you can just purchase one month, three month, six months, or 12 months. Starting at three months, currently you'll get a free gift with because it's over 50. Um, and don't forget, with your celebration, there are lots of free gifts to choose from. All these stamp sets for your purchases. I'm not using any of these today, so I'm just going to do a quick. These are all only available free with purchase, as well as multiple designer papers. The Paper Blooms. Uh, very, it's actually called Very Delightful. That comes with a stamp set, free with a hundred. Flower and Field, and Oso oh Ombre, which must be the other direction. <laughs> Oso oh Ombre. So lots of choices there, and don't forget, no limit on those. Okay, so we're gonna, <laughs> the stamps went, woo. at least they didn't go the direction to go down um, off the table. I'm gonna point the camera down so we can get started stamping. You've waited long enough, very patiently. Let me try to adjust here. Every darn time when I pre-position these words, they're not in the same position when I redo it the next day. I don't know what. It must be that my the little clip I have these on is swiveling. I bet that's it. I need to get a system so I know where that swivel is. Okay, so here's that die I want to make sure I use for you guys. Let me grab a scrap of paper real quick. And, but we're going to use Art Gallery to make our three cards today. And this is Art Gallery. It's a bundle in the mini catalog. This one here. It's actually a whole suite. Let me find it for you. And so there's designer paper, there's ribbon, there's gold leafing, which I've shown a couple of different times on other projects. And what else? The heat and stick powder is on this page, which is like you heat it up and it becomes a glue. Um, again, I've shown that on other videos. Oh, there's acetate paper, which I am going to show you all that today, but I'm not using it. There's an embossing folder. It's a whole suite of products, and you can purchase the entire suite for $102.25 or everything sold individually, including if you did only want the stamp set or only the dies. So, in bloom. Love it. I mean, in bloom. Art gallery. <laughs> okay. Where's my mind? And then the <clears throat> designer paper, I believe it's called Fine Art, Fine Art Floral. So this, I'm just going to show you all the designs real quick. I keep trying to figure out what that white thing is. It's my paper towel for the technique I'm going to do with my iron later. Okay, so there's that one. 
There's this gorgeous piece, which one of the Golden Garden acetate sheets matches. You can see I've used mine a lot. So, but it's this piece here. Is it this one? Oh, no. This is not. Is that the one? I can't remember now. I'm blanking. It's this one. Sorry. Which aligns with the golden garden and then there's another one that aligns as well I guess this one doesn't have a match it's different it's still gorgeous though then there's that side this one has a match and I you're I'm gonna use it today is it this one I'm pretty sure but my um yeah, it is this one for sure, but finding this puzzle right now is not going to happen. This is the only piece I have left. Um, but the, if you start out with both sheets laid on top of each other and cut it properly, you'll be fine. And the other side is gorgeous. And there's that one that matches the Golden Garden. These, love that design. And this one, so pretty. Okay, so there's all that. And then the acetate, so if we can kind of see them there, it's 12 by 12. I've just cut mine up. It's gold on one side, but if you flip it, you can have a silver side. Is my video still going? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I looked up at the camera and I'm like, it looks paused. The one I showed you that matches the other sheet of designer paper. And, and then this one, which can go with any of it. And again, they both have a gold side and a silver side. I'm, actually, I am using a little piece of this today, this design, on one of my cards. Okay, so there we go. And then the ribbon is called Fine Art Ribbon, and it's gold glitter. You wouldn't love that. This is the sweet that I'm using in the stamp a stack this month. So that's 12 cards for $30 and it's free, not free, it's um, includes $20 in merchandise. Okay, so I'm gonna make the first card here. I have my card base. It is eight and a half by 11 basic white cut in half. So that's five and a half by eight and a half. You'll get two cards out of one piece of paper and it will fit into the invitation or medium size Stampin' Up envelope. And then the next layer I have is Pretty Peacock and it's four by five and a fourth. And then I have a piece of the Fine Art Floral Designer Paper, three and three fourths by five. So I just keep going down a fourth of an inch on each one. And then I pre die cut from st stitched nested labels, which are these dies here. Mine are all jumbled up here, but there's all these different sizes that nest inside each other of this shape. It's called stitched nested labels. And I believe I used the next to the largest. Yes, this is the largest and that's the next one down in basic white. And so you'll see die cutting today. In fact, where did I put that die that I said? I don't wanna to forget to do that later whenever I have to die cut something else. So I pre-did that. And then I have scraps of basic white to stamp on and we'll die cut those out. Okay, So, but I wanted to show you something I did because my brain just wasn't working with me to necessarily just look at the designer papers and figure out what colors to stamp the flowers in and be able to like and it look good if that makes sense so i first pulled out all of the ink pads that were listed on the back of the designer paper which um i don't think i have the back over here with me but when you purchase the does any of our designer papers on the back it tells you all the colors and then the colors are also listed in the catalog. Although I think there's more colors listed on the back of the paper than in the catalog, to be honest. There's a lot more. Be aware of that. But these colors are going to coordinate with it. Anyway, so I did that. And then I didn't use every single one necessarily, but I stamped a bunch of them. 
that I, and especially thinking of the color schemes I knew I wanted to use today. And then I wrote down what the colors were. And then I was able to grab the paper and like, that looks hideous. <laughs> that would work. And that's what I did. So this one, I was like, yes, beautiful. So saffron bumblebee. So anyway, and I'm just going to keep these in my stamp case for next time I need to make something. So a little tip there on that. And I could have made a lot more. At first, I was going to put them on a single sheet of paper. That's what I started. And then I cut them apart because I was like, no, I need to be able to put it on the paper and see. So that's a, just a little tip of what I did. And I can add to that whenever I want, like I said. <clears throat> and so the colors I decided to use on this one for the leaf, I'm doing Pretty Peacock. That's just based on this color and this color, which by the way, Pretty Peacock is not even listed anywhere to match this paper. So we can always check Stampin' Up and be like, you missed one. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> the Bumblebee and Pumpkin Pie was what I decided to go with. Let me see if that one's here. So, this is Bumblebee. Do I have it? Yes. This is Bumblebee and Pumpkin Pie. This is Bumblebee and Terracotta, which does look good. It looks okay, but I liked this one better for this paper. So, there you go. And then these flowers are, or this flower, has two images that you can stack on top of each other. Hey, everybody. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Evelyn. Hey, Vivi. Thank you. Thanks, Diana. Hey, Tommy. Okay, so two flowers you stamp on top of each other to get the two images like you just saw. So I like, I go back and forth depending on the stamp set, but in this one, I like to stamp the more solid image first, and I'm going to do Bumblebee. And so don't press hard on our ink pads. Remember that. I was so proud because I had an event with, as y'all know, the paper party share with Alejandra and April and our customers. And we did a Zoom party. And someone commented, I think she's on here today, to thank me for finally teaching her not to press too hard on her ink pads. And I was very proud. That was like a proud parent moment. <laughs> you do honestly get a better stamped image on Stampin' Up's foam ink pads if you don't press hard, but just move the stamp around. You can get a lot of ink on there, but not by smushing it down in there. Um, that does two things. It gets ink all over the edges of your block, which can come off on your project. And the second thing it does is push ink off of your stamp and make it have less ink on it, basically. Okay, and then Bumblebee, I mean, sorry, Pumpkin Pie for the detail. And this one's pretty easy to align visually. Um, there's like a, a bottom of the leaf, bottom left that I look at to align with this part. And then I just shift the rest to match it up. But I don't get it perfect half the time and that's always fine. And this is definitely one of those stamps that if you don't have a firm table, you want to use the Stampin' Pierce mat under it or scratch paper on top of that. Um, to get a good stamping surface so your image comes out clean. My table's just extremely firm like a countertop. And then you have that gorgeous flower. And then I need my leaves. I don't even, let me look at the stamp set. Yeah, the leaves are just one image. There's not an option to do a second stamp, step on top of that. But if there was, I didn't do it. So. <laughs> so pretty peacock there. And then, of course, there are coordinating dies to cut these out. So that's what I'm going to do. So these will both fit on the mini stamping cut and emboss machine. Let me stamp my greeting first. Um, but I'm going to use the big one so I can put all these on here at one time. My greeting is going to say best wishes from the same stamp set. I'm not using any other stamps today. And... I don't know why I got like junk all over all of my paper today. Um, I'm going to put it down here in the bottom right hand sort of corner of that image. The, the stitch nested label in pretty peacock. 
Okay, so I'm gonna grab my big stamp and cut and emboss machine so I can fit all this on here at one time. And the machine comes with everything you need to be able to cut or emboss everything we sell. And it comes with instructions, and of course your demonstrator, AKA me, can tell you if you don't understand the instructions. So I'm going to put all this on here. We're gonna test out this brick thing and see what happens. Most of the time, I'm one of those demonstrators that once people start using stuff, I'm like, oh, that's how you do it. And then I can make my own stuff because now I know how to use it <laughs> and how it looks cute. Okay, I'm really far away from this to see for aligning. Let me get my head as close as I can. Hopefully that's good. I like to be right on top of the die cut and the paper so I can get, like make sure there's not white showing where it shouldn't be. Okay, then I'm gonna carefully place the top plate on top to not shift any of those dies and then just run it through. It only takes one time with our machine. Everything will cut out. I'm turning it slower than normal because of the video. And then, there we go. So, of course, it just pops right out. It's not exactly perfect, but it will definitely work. And on this card, I discovered after that I totally could have just stamped this directly on the, um, the leaf directly on the paper, but you'll see. Okay, so... The brick thing cuts out holes. <laughs> so I'm assuming you can use these bricks to rebuild a brick wall. You probably won't be seeing me do that. Um, you could do something where you cut it out in a few different colors and then piece these back in, you know, glue it back together. And then I'm sure you could run this through multiple times on a larger piece of paper and create a scene and then you can put something behind it. This is for the butterflies, but, um, or in front of it. That's what I have for y'all right now on this little brick die. Definitely much smaller than the brick embossing folder. And that's the one, if you've just joined us, watch replay when I show all the butterfly stuff that you can get now in our starter kit or purchase next month. Okay, so let's finish this card up. We're gonna use the ribbon. We're going to, I don't remember if I need those dies again, so just put them there. Fold the card base in half with the bone folder. I like to align the two corners on the table, butt the paper up against my thumbnail, and then do as much folding as possible with my bone folder. That gives me a cleaner crease on the inside. Hey Sharon, no problem. I agree, Susan, love the sweet, but the wrinkle on the inside will be much, or it will be less wrinkly, <laughs> the wrinkle, um, if you use the bone folder. And then I'm gonna tie ribbon around these two pieces. So I'm gonna attach the designer paper first to the pretty peacock. With stamp and seal, you do not need too much adhesive. It's just wasting it, because it's very strong. And then I'm gonna wrap this ribbon around and tie it in a knot on the side here. This is a portrait <laughs> shape card. I always get those words mixed up. And I always have to do that hand movement to say, oh yeah, and I think of a picture as portrait and grass as landscape. Now I'm looking for my tweezers, here they are. Um, so I like to use these reverse tweezers, which you can get from the craft store or the, or Amazon reverse tweezers. When you squeeze them, they open. When you let go, they close. And that will hold your ribbon there so you can tie your knot or your bow freely. So you only need, like you don't need a second person, basically. And then I'll trim. I'm just doing a knot. not 
even. Okay. So now I can attach this piece to my card base. Let me make sure before I actually put it down that I have the knot far enough over. Yeah, I thought so, but just in case. And that'll go on the card base. So I have the nice little 1 8 inch borders all the way down. I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals on the Stitch Nested Label. I'm using my white mini ones, and I'll do five. So, in case you haven't heard me talk about that, I'm using the mini ones now because I was cutting my big ones in half. And so this would have been all halves. But you get 720 minis on a sheet for the same price as... 100, I mean 720 in a pack versus 300 in a pack of big ones. So if you cut those all in half, that's 600 versus 720. And then I placed the leaf, the stem and leaves on here flat. I might, yeah, I need to grab my silicone sheet from the, another place in the room. I think I put it away accidentally because I always keep it over here um, after a video a, a while ago. Uh, this just protects, the silicone craft sheet protects your work surface from excess adhesive when you're putting adhesive on something skinny. And I'll use the flower just to make sure I put the stem where I want it. So the stem's going to go to at an angle there. And then I'll do my mini dimensionals. And then we'll, this card will be done. And guess what? This is one of the cards we're going to make in my stamp -a stack this month. So you will make three of them. This stitch nested label will be die cut for you. You'll have scraps like I did for the other two pieces. And you cut your own designer paper in the sampler and stamp -a stack, but everything else is cut for you. So there is that card. And of course you can have a chance to win the three cards I'm making today by commenting on the video or saying hi on the video today. And not only today, by the way, in replay as well. All right. And I was, just as another side note, I was specifically trying to use d a different color scheme on these cards than I did at my retreat in a box. We used more, uh, just a totally different color scheme on those cards. Okay, um, and, and January 11th is the deadline to join that club or register for that class. So I have another white card base, a four by five and a fourth flirty flamingo. This is my second card, by the way. I have, I'm, get, I'm separating all these pieces in my hand over here. I have the designer paper which is three and three fourths by five. And this is the one that I was trying to show you earlier on the video, but I couldn't match up the piece. This is the second design that has a full sheet of acetate that matches it. So I cut, I laid them on top of each other and cut them both at the same time. So hopefully you can see how that image matches exactly. The gold is outlining all of the stamped or printed images there. Let me show you the back of that one real quick. So, I had at the time, I don't now when I'm, you know, since the video, I had a pretty good strip going. I don't know if this matches up. I don't remember what I've done. But, um, so I, I cut three and three fourth inch strips. So, I used, actually, I made one with a failed card. Um, it's in my stack. I'll just show you this one. I didn't end up liking how it turned out, but that's one of the ones I cut off at three and three fourths five. <laughs> by five. Um, it was just too busy, and I even asked a couple people their opinion, and we decided to just scrap it. But long story short, I cut up all of these pieces, and I, then I was able to use them on different cards, or I will be able to use them in the future. And then when... So three and three fourths by five, so that's 10 inches this way. If you do two, that leaves you a two inch piece. So if you cut three and three fourths, and you cut five inches, five inches, you'll have a two inch strip left. 
And so I just threw together a quick bonus card with that piece. So it's, you know, I mean, it's pretty, but it's nothing exciting, but it's both the designer paper and the acetate together. So, so if I cut this at five inches again, I'll have that two inch piece left. So that's just a way when you cut up your paper to, especially in this case, to maximize what you're getting out of it. Oops. Okay. And did y'all hear that? Okay, I got it. This just fell on the ground. You can lose these forever if you're not careful. <laughs> the lid to your stamp and seal. Okay, so I have that. Now I have two more scraps. I'm like, where's my original card? Uh, of white. I have a piece of Whisper White or basic white that I have embossed with the painted texture embossing folder. So I cut it down and put it in there and ran it through the die cutting machine, the stamp and cut and emboss. And this is with the suite. It's an amazing embossing folder. Just trust me when I say you want it. And it is, this paper is two and a half by four. And it's actually, this card's going to go landscape, so it's going to go on there that way. And then I die cut. There are two dies in this set that are little labels for you to stamp greetings on. And it fits the greetings that come in the stamp set. And so I die cut the smaller one. And I believe this card is going to say thank you. So I'll stamp that on there. And then the colors I'm using are Flirty Flamingo and Petal Pink. Again, I did my thing where I tested out the color scheme with my pre-stamped images. And <clears throat> these stamps. I need to clean these stamps real quick, so I'll use my Simply Chamois. Just get it wet. Squeeze out the excess and clean, and then rinse it in water when it's too dirty, and then you're good to go again. So... Petal pink will be, these are the same exact flowers I just used, will be the larger one. And the solid one. And flirty flamingo for the detail one. And also for my greeting, so I'll do that real quick. These labels, they look like the... They're skinny like the greetings, but the edges of them look like an old-fashioned postage stamp, if that makes sense. Okay, so I should have pre-done these. Why didn't I? I have no clue. When I'm plant like making the samples for the videos, and then I make the sample, and then I immediately cut the paper for it. And half the time my brain tells me, you should pre-do that. And the other half, no comprehension. <laughs> Nothing works. <laughs> so, I'll just do these real quick here. I can only do one at a time. Actually, I do have two sets of these dies now. I bought a second one, but I don't know where it is right now. But, um, since I only have one die, I can only do one at a time. So, I'll use my mini. This is what I would do over on my work table with my mini. Stamp and cut. And else, it's a great thing to get in your starter kit, by the way. It's $60. I'm trying to see y'all's comments while I'm cutting these. Hey, Sue, thanks for sharing and good morning. Thank you, Jackie. The designer paper, Sharon, is called Fine Art Floral. And it, co I didn't cut that very well. It coordinates with the stamps I'm using, Art Gallery. It's a suite in the mini catalog, fine art floral. And uh, of course, when you have time to go back and watch replay, I showed all the designs in the paper. Due to my rushing, I cut these out terribly, but as you know, if you win the cards, I give you the better version of the two. So never worry, <laughs> never fear. And honestly, when I put these on white, you won't be able to see the edges are not cut too evenly as well. It will totally disguise that. Okay, so I folded my card base in half. I'm going to, and I forgot one piece to show you for this card. It's gold foil, and it's three-fourths of an inch by five. 
what am I gonna do? What I wanna do is attach this gold foil. Basically, the acetate and designer paper is the front of my card and the gold foil is gonna go across the center. So I want to attach this first across the center of the acetate because I don't want my adhesive to show here. I don't want tape lines to be there. So now I can flip the acetate over and run a strip of adhesive all the way down. And I'm just gonna use that to attach this acetate to my card. For me, it doesn't bother me that these two ends are loose. If that bothers you, I would recommend glue dots and you can hide them under the gold image. But it doesn't bother me, so. I mean, if people are messing with my card that much, they probably wanna start stamping with me because they're like investigating the mechanics of it. And that is, I'll be glad, so. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put that all on the flirty flamingo and then attach that to my card base. Trying to decide which one I want on top of this image because you get different parts of it, you know, for each card. So I'll put it's more, there's more stuff here, so I'll put that at the top. And then I have that piece that I embossed already, <clears throat> which is gonna go right in the center of my card, and I'm gonna put the flowers and greeting on that, and then add a bow. So I will build this little piece first. One of my flowers is gonna go down flat. So I'll use my snail, top left-hand corner here. I'll let it hang off the edges a little bit. <clears throat> and then, mini dimensionals for the big flower. I'm using like three. It's very unevenly placed because I'm rushing myself here. For some reason, I feel like I'm behind. So I'll just tilt that one to the right and offset it. And again, it'll hang off the top edge there a little bit. And then a couple more mini dimensionals on my greeting. It's only four dollars for those mini dimensionals and you get 720 then that doesn't even count all the edges you get that you can cut up and use you can see I've already cut one of the or this corner for some reason um, so you can use all that as well so it's way over 720 so I'm gonna do a bunny ear bow here with this ribbon the same ribbon two bunny ears Lots of space in between them. One is in each hand. The tail's hanging off to the left and all my fingers are pointing at me. Nothing is pointing away because that means I twisted my ribbon. Right hand will cross over the left, push that same right loop down into the bunny hole and pull. And you get the most beautiful bow. No, I'm just kidding, it's ugly. Just fix it. <laughs> I'm. Can y'all hear a noise like the way I'm leaning on my table? It is um, like squeaking. In case you hear that, it's not me. Okay, so that's good enough. So trim the excess off. This one end is frayed a little bit. This ribbon frays really well, by the way, but only on one side because of, you know, like how the fibers are. Let me show y'all real quick because it looks really pretty. You can get it started and you can pull out the string and you'll have a really pretty uh, fray. You just have to, it got tangled there, but that <clears throat> it will untangle, see? And then you trim off that piece that you pulled out. And I could not make that go straight enough to look cute for anything, so that's trash. But <clears throat> just so you know, that looks really cool on a lot of projects but you can't fray the other end. At least I could not, no matter how hard I tried. So, just a side random tip there. So, mini glue dot for my bow. And it's gonna go right below the flowers. Then dimensionals, and I'll be done with this card. This, I can't remember now. I, <laughs> I'll remember once I get all my samples together, but I believe this is another stamp -a stack card that we'll be making in the stamp -a stack class. I'm pretty, pretty sure. 
So there it is. What do you think? Cute. I'm pretty sure it is. Let me look through my stack here. So we're making these two. Yeah, that is one. So this is one of the cards you'll make in my Stampa stack this month. 30 bucks, 20 in merchandise. You're gonna get some of the paper, some of the acetate, some of the ribbon, etc. So here's the card close up. I love it. And I had another, I actually tucked that ribbon under there on purpose on this first card I made under the greeting. I had another comment about it. Oh, and don't forget, so if you were taking that class and you cut up your piece for this, then you would have that two inch strip left to, to use on another card. And then here's the one where I used a lot of the same elements, but made a slightly unattractive card. <laughs> so, there you go. Okay, now let me plug my iron in because it's time to do some laundry. Just kidding, haha. -ha. I never use my iron unless it's for crafting or if I'm like going to a Stampin' Up! event and I have to actually dress nice. Um, not that we're forced to, we can dress casual, but you know, you like to pull out your nice clothes for that. Um, and this is an oldie but goodie. I need my blending brush. I need my card base, Whisper Basic White. Then I have a piece of Basic White, but it is, I'm gonna trim it down later. So it's a full fourth of a sheet, which is five and a half by four and a fourth. Just for white, basic white. Sheesh. I'm just gonna keep saying it until I get it right. Then, where's my card sample? I'm like, what is this piece for? I think I have this small piece of white here just to show you that I die cut this label from it. I don't think I need that. And then I cut one of the grading labels. So let me, I'll give you better information about that. And then I have the little strip of acetate I said I would use. So this is going to go on the front of my card. It's just, I believe one inch, nope, three fourths of an inch by four. That's that acetate design that doesn't match it specifically any of the papers. Then I cut the longer, it's like a two and three quarter inch label from the, what are these dies called? Floral gallery dies. This other label I was talking about is from my stitched so sweetly dies. And it's one of the rectangle scallops and it's the next to the largest one. So it's about two and a half by three and three fourths. And all those are white. Okay. Oh, I do need this piece. Okay, I know why I have the scrap of white now. So I'm not gonna stamp on the label, the large one. I'm gonna stamp my greeting on the small one and a flower on here, that's what it is. But let me do my technique first. So I'm gonna need that white, but the first thing I'm gonna do is take a piece of wax paper. It's the same size as the white paper, five and a half by four and a fourth. And then I'm going to take an embossing folder. This is the Ornate Floral, I believe is the name. It's in our annual catalog. It's got all these little bitty flowers on it. You can't see it any better that way. Um, and I'm going to run this through the die cut machine. And I wrote top on the um, wax paper. And that's the side that's facing up to the front of the embossing folder so that when I take it out, I don't get confused because I want to put the top side down when I do this technique. So let me run this through the folder real quick. Oops, on my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Which again, comes with all the pieces you need. So you just adjust it, take off what you don't need. And run that through it so I can turn easier. Does anybody remember this technique? It's oldie but goodie. Um, so now this wax paper is embossed. And that's not the part, that's not the pretty part. <laughs> Although, you know, maybe you think that's cool. Who knows? 
Um, then I just need, you could do this on an ironing board, but I have a towel so I don't burn my table. And then I'm going to put my cardstock down and then I'm going to put the top side down so, because that's the image that's popped out is what I want to transfer onto this white paper. I made the white bigger than I need and so that if I if my paper goes crooked, it's fine. And then I'm going to put a paper towel on top of that so I don't melt wax paper into my iron. And then I counted to about 30, like, but I wouldn't say it's 30 seconds because I was counting kind of quickly. So, um, I'm going to try to count while I talk. <laughs> And uh, obviously, I'm moving it around just so it doesn't like scorch or burn. And also because the iron is skinnier at the top. So just to make sure it all gets heated. And I think that's about 30. So it's a, for me, a count of 30 versus a full 30 seconds. And then pull this off. I can kind of see it in this light, but I couldn't really see it very well when I practiced this. And I was like, oh, maybe it didn't work, but it did. So the wax got transferred onto there and I did test it and I was able to get a second round out of it, but it was more subtle. So, you know, you can reuse it or not. This is where you go to the dollar store and get your wax paper. And then I'm going to grab some scratch paper here. So this technique is called wax resist. The wax is going to resist my ink. I have my blending brush. We used to do this with sponges. Of course, the blending brush just gives you a smoother application. And we sell these three in a pack for $12. So it's a great deal. Um, so I have balmy blue ink. This is not one of the stamp -a stack cards, by the way, because we're not going to be ironing. But um, I'm going to get some ink on my blending brush. And then just, I don't want that harsh half little circle there on my paper, on my project. So get some of that off on your scratch paper and then go onto your card. And as you, it looks like I smeared it. As you um, apply the ink, the image will start to appear from under, I mean, whatever, it'll start to appear <laughs> through the ink. Um, I Okay, it's fine. I think probably due to the pressure of being on a video, <laughs> I may have um, moved the wax paper. I did this multiple times the other day and I didn't have it. But if you can see, the flowers look a little in motion. Y'all see that? They're like, woo, these are some drunk flowers here. But just to save you time, I won't redo it, but you'll see the finished sample, and it's awesome. Um, and I swear, this, I don't think it's ever happened when I've done this technique before, so it must have been just talking and doing a video at the same time. But the long story short is that the wax paper transfers onto your paper. It resists the ink that you're applying on top of it, and it gives you a nice, soft, subtle background with a pattern in it. Yeah, these flowers look insane. That's not smearing of the brush, by the way, by any means. That's just my wax. Um, I didn't test this the other day. Where's my paper towel? I don't know if it comes... Yeah, no, it doesn't look, it become any whiter when you rub on it. Um, let me show you another one I did with this embossing folder. It's called, or I always forget the name of this one, Textile, Tasteful Textile. So hopefully you can see that it's not smeared like this one is. Again, I must have literally moved the wax, which obviously would drag it. Um, and just the exact pattern that's on this embossing folder is transferred onto the paper. So don't want to take the time to redo it, but it for sure works. <laughs> Just, of course not when I'm doing a video. Um, now, to clean your brush, your blending brush, you can wipe it on your chamois. Now, of course, if your chamois is filthy, filthy, full of ink, like not stained like this, but full of 
fresh ink, you might transfer some of that to it. But otherwise, you can clean it, and then you just test it on your scratch paper. And when you don't see the color ink anymore, it is clean, ready to use on another color. So, it doesn't have to be only blue, for example. <laughs> is anybody laughing at me about my... Thank you, Dana. She says the technique is what's important. <laughs> I agree, but thank you very much. Um, yeah, it, who knows why it didn't work. I should have pre-done one for just in case, but I've never had that happen. So what I want to say about this technique is that we used to do it on glossy paper. But Stampin' Up! doesn't carry that anymore. So I tested it on this to see if it would even work on regular white. Um, and it did. So on glossy, it was just shinier. But I think, well, I thought that the gloss was what made it transfer and resist. But it wasn't. It's just the fact that it is, there's wax on there. So now I need to trim this down. Um, and what I'm going to do is take about an eighth of an inch off of each side, and that will remove the dark ink from the edges also, if that happened. So, it's supposed to be four by five and a fourth, so I'm a little over four inches on my measurement there. And then I'll flip it around and go to four inches. And then this should be five and a fourth, so I'm going to go a little taller than five and a fourth up here, and then bring it down to five and a fourth when I flip it. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm cutting all four sides off so that it's clean. Like I said, this is just going to be the drunk one or the, it's very windy with these flowers today, very windy. <laughs> okay, and then for my flowers on this card, we're doing, not balmy blue, we're doing So Saffron and Bumblebee, and it's the other flower in the stamp set, so there's, the image I did is just one large single flower, this other one is, a, there is a stem, that the flowers are growing from. There's like a berry image and then three, really four petals, but three large ones and one tiny one. So that's the larger image. I'm gonna do that first in So Saffron, which is a lighter yellow. And then there is a single detail stamp. And it actually works with a couple of different images. So you can stamp this detail on, there's a small, like, flower image that's just flowers no sleep well there's tiny leaves it's just very small so you can stamp it on top of that or individually on top of all three of these larger ones so I'm doing that in bumblebee and then there's a die for this here's another tip if you want your ink darker go to the very tip of your ink pad where you normally don't pull the ink from see how much darker that is let me do this again right here Obviously, whoever wins this is going to receive the other card that I pre-made. And then my greeting on this card says, thinking of you. And this one will be in balmy blue. So, thinking of you on that longer label die from this set. I'm thinking of you. Sorry. It says, I'm thinking of you. So let me die this, die cut this out real quick. There's the little die. Now, I just, it doesn't bother me that the flowers are, or that the leaves are yellow and the stems are yellow and all that. But if that bothers you, there's different ways to get that extra, or those different colors. Um, one is just to use regular markers, not Stampin' Blends, but regular markers the water-based ones, to ink up each individual image. Um, or you could ink it up, like if it's a lighter ink like this, you could ink it up in yellow and then take a sponge dauber, which, which fits on your finger, and get your green ink on there. And then, 
sponge the flowers individually or even marker them. There's, there's a lot of different ways. Or you could die cut it out multiple times in different colors and then snip it apart and piece it back together. So lots of ways to, if you wanna turn those other images different colors. Always make sure you clean the die out when you're finished. I like to use a toothpick and poke that paper out from the front, but I'll not do that right now. I'm like, oh, I'm not too bad on time for me. It's kind of normal, but just to save you guys time. Okay, so now we can build this card. We have all our pieces. And I'm gonna fold my card base in half first. And then, so this piece of acetate is going to go across the center of my beautifully wax papered background, <laughs> wax resist background. So I know then the flowers are going to go on top. So I'm going to put adhesive right in the center part of this adhesive piece, um, um, acetate piece, but not on the two edges. Basically the same thing I did on the last card, just a different size paper. And so the adhesive will be hidden under my embellishment. Then I can go ahead and put this on my card base. Not too much adhesive, don't forget. I was going to say I would redo that later, but it's getting glued down, so we're just in it. Um, mini dimensionals for pretty much everything else here. So my little flower, so cute. And I did do the thing where I tested the colors on this one as well. Um, the flower is going to go towards the top of this rectangle and then the greeting will go at the bottom with the mini dimensionals. And then I'm going to put a bow on there, but I'll do that last. I'll use mini dimensionals to place this rectangle on the center of the card front. I'll do five. And then I'm going to add a bow. Same kind of bow I tied earlier, so hopefully it'll look good. I'll just tie that real quick. And while I'm doing that, let me let you investigate the real background, <laughs> which hopefully that I can zoom in there. Hope, um, hopefully you can see the difference between the two. Kind of straight. Uh, let me tie a bow with, I was gonna say with my lost ribbon. Um, and I'll add it to this card. So what do you think? Can you see, oh, that's super crooked. Can you see the two, or the difference, and can you see all the detail on this one? You, you can, it's truly little bitty flowers. I'll bring it up closer to the camera in a second as well. So I straightened it, and then I unstraightened it, apparently. I don't know what my problem is with the crookedness, but I cannot comprehend <laughs> which direction to, like that's gotta be a, a brain block I have. Which direction to flip my camera so that it's straight? I think it's because it's like opposite, but still. I should be able to figure that out. You know? Okay, so I got a bow here. Not bad. If you missed the bow tying part, I just tied a bow in the last card so you can see that. And then add that right there. That's it. So I'm going to point, uh, well, actually, hold on. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. She said pretty cards as always. So nice. Um, let me bring out all three cards first real quick, and then I'll bring that one closer to the camera when I turn the phone back up facing me. Um, <laughs> as a reminder, in case you're like, mm, maybe I don't really want to win those cards, <laughs> I give away the... Um, the best versions. So whichever ones I didn't mess up on are the ones, why is that so off? There we go. 
How about that? Um, whichever ones I didn't mess up on the video are the ones that get put in the prize thing for you guys to possibly win. So, hopefully you like those today. I want to remind you, these two will be part of my Stamp-A-Stack class. And then we have two other designs as well that we're going to make in that class, which would be these here. Give you a little sneak peek there. Um, so this is the Stamp-A-Stack class for this month, but you make three of each design. So you get 12 cards. We pre die cut whatever we can for you. You cut your own designer paper and you um, stamp at home, obviously, unless you're local and do one of those other options. So that is stamp a stack for this month using art gallery. Let me bring this up so I can say goodbye. <laughs> Fun times here with my little mistakes. <laughs> Dana, she was trying to move her phone to, to get the, the stuff where it needs to be. That doesn't really work. It's the, the, uh, whatever I am, the user. Um, so I'm trying to get that where you guys can see those flowers. Look how super, it's so cute. Like I'm really disappointed that didn't work when I showed you, but y'all know I just slid it. So Hopefully you can see all those little flowers there in the background. And then this was the other design I did, like, of a folder. Now, you, we have so many folders, and um, you could use any of them. Thank you guys for the compliments. And I, uh, I did try it. I just want to say real quick. I mean, and maybe, I don't know. But I tried in the Wax Paper Resist with this painted what is it called? Painted, now I'm back at, blanking on the name. Painted texture embossing folder. I did not like how that looked. That looked terrible <laughs> for the one I did. So it might look better either with different color or something. And it wasn't a smearing thing. It just, the pattern didn't look like anything. So, but play with wax paper resist. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you have a cat that helps you stamp like me, just make sure you turn off your iron so your cat doesn't burn themselves or your dog. <laughs> but, um, thank y'all for the compliments. I couldn't read everything when I was having my disaster of a mistake there. So if you made any comments on that, I'll read those later. <laughs> but thank you for being here and supporting me and sharing and watching and liking and all that. And everybody have a great week. I should be back next week on Thursday at nine. So I will see y'all later. Bye.